Hey going guys, it's Jetsimmer here again today. I'm sorry that I haven't got this uh, out sooner, but today we're going to be doing a advanced tutorial on some landings. Uh, so we'll be doing an ILS landing, uh, we'll be doing brake landing, we'll be doing hard, uh, hard landings and uh, go arounds as well. Uh, for the purpose of the tutorial, every landing will be a go around, um, but everything is um, all the standard and standard operating procedures for any type of landing are exactly the same, whether it is a full stop landing or a go around landing. Um, so yeah, so the airport is over there today. So what we're going to be doing first off, we have our active sky turned on. I will turn it off when we do the ILS because I need to use runway 14 on this uh, airfield and the uh, crosswind is on runway 32 I believe, um, remembering. So we'll be landing on runway 32. Um, and then we'll cross over to, we'll turn active sky off so there's no wind and then we'll be doing ILS runways, uh, an ILS landing on runway 1-4. Um, so first off we'll be doing just our normal approach uh, to the runway as if we're flying in the default scenery uh, of FSX. So we'll just do a, another full loop and then we'll head in and do our landing. Then what we'll do is a brake landing, which is what you normally would do on an aircraft carrier, which we will do carrier landings at a later date. So for the purpose of this tutorial, we'll be doing it on an airfield. Brake landing, I will explain as we go, and a hard landing, which is basically a controlled crash landing. We have to be pretty much dead on uh, with hook down and all that sort of stuff. So a controlled crash landing is uh, what the military call it. So first off we'll just do our normal landing, then we'll go into a um, circuit, go into a full brake landing, and then we'll go and do a crash landing, uh, a controlled crash landing, and then we'll turn around and come back around for our last landing, which will be a ILS approach. Now we don't have to teach you to do go arounds, considering every one of these landings will be a go around. Um, so yeah, stay tuned. So what we're doing now, we're sitting just under the 3,000 feet mark, or we should be right on 3,000 feet, um, per se. Just say that we are uh, a nice, casual coming in uh, to any airfield uh, in Australia. It's normally the 3,000 localizer, 3,000 feet is the localizer uh, for any ILS. So what we'll do is we're just going to swing around to the uh, uh, where are we? We're going to stick around to about 170 degrees. So we can set that in the autopilot. We'll go 170, heading at 170, we'll head that way uh, for a bit. So that's the runway airport over there. When we get close, basic um, for this aircraft, you don't want the gear down under over 240. Uh, the flaps can come down at 2. Um, you will know about the gear if the gear comes down too early because you'll uh, hear it, it'll be beeping at you uh, really annoyingly. Alright, so that's the airfield just there. So we're coming up. Alright, so what we'll do is we'll take over the aircraft. We'll start slowing down and start turning a bit sharper to the airfield. be that far away but that's okay. We'll get back there. <laughs> now uh, in Australia on land uh, for most of the uh, Air Force jets all circuits are done at 2,000 feet um, and the majority of uh, GA aircraft are done at 1,500. I don't know where it, what it's like in other other areas of the globe, uh, but for most of Australia, it's 1500, depending on the uh, hills and mountains and all that sort of stuff. All right, so we've been given clearance to come in for a uh, to enter the crosswind leg on runway 32. So we're coming in on the crosswind leg now. Um, so the runway is to our left. Uh, we're 
all those buildings there. So what we'll do is we're going to start slowing down, start configuring the aircraft uh, for straight and level flight at uh, this at this speed. We're going to just let the aircraft do its own thing. Now the good thing about these flaps is they're automatic, so you can put the half flaps down now, and they will do their own thing as the big, as the aircraft slow down, the flaps will come down as well, so that's the good thing about this aircraft. So, they start slowing down at certain times. Alright, so we've intersected the crosswind leg, so you can see, I'll see the runway. So we're coming down, uh, and then we'll do a right hand turn, uh, left hand turn, sorry, onto the runway. Alright, so we can see the runway, so let's put our flaps down half now so they should be going down. If you really wanted to drop speed you can just chuck your speed brake on for a bit and it will pull the aircraft right up. Uh, the speed brake does turn off at 2.30 so once you hit 2.30 it pulls up basically then you can put your gear down. Okay so a couple of things that pop up on screen you can have those two if you really want to down there if the one up the top fails you've also got the one down the bottom there. Fine. Um, if, if all else fails. Now what we want to do is we want to get that E bracket uh, in the center of that little line. So you'll see on the left hand side there you've got your AOE indicator. So the yellow means the ball, uh, which is in the center of the E bracket. That green means you need to speed up. If, that green, if you see that green, you need to speed up. Or the, otherwise you're just going to drop out of the sky. Okay. Red means you're too high, green means you're too low. Green technically should mean you're in the good, but no, you're not. So once you've got that yellow ball, you can try and keep it. Okay. You can slow down, you can speed up, you can try and keep it. So I try and keep it as best I can. And then once we get on par, so we're coming in around on the airport now, we check to see we've got full green lights and full green lights and full. So we do, we do that to make sure that we've got the flaps and the gears down. So three green lights for gears and the fourth is a full green light, not half. Alright, so now we're going to come in for our final approach onto the airfield. And then we're just going to go full in takeoff. Okay, so what happens on a full takeoff, what you want to do as soon as you get to the ground. So we're going to have to slow down just a tad more, just so we can get that e-bracket back again. And then speed back up again. Once that e-bracket starts coming back down, slow back down to get it in. There we go. Then you bring that e-bracket down again a bit further. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Trying to line up with the runway center line and you're pretty good. This is how you do it without ILS. It is very easy to land uh, an F-18. Uh, so this is a nice controlled landing. Alright, so don't worry about that. Alright, it's just telling us to pitch up. That's okay. And then we can go ahead and cut. That was a bounce of a landing, but still a landing. Flaps up, it's a half, and trim, and full throttle. You don't really need trim, but it's probably good if you do. There it is. The trim's finally come up. It flaps up. You want to do that trim pretty quick. If you don't have, um, uh, what you call it, VR like me, it's a bit hard to get that up pretty quickly. So you want to push that as soon as you land. That's that. That is your first thing before you hit the throttle. If it don't work, it's not gonna. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit our 2,000 feet mark, and we're gonna slow it down right here, and just do our normal turn around the airfield. All right. So we're at 2,500, that's all right. We're gonna be doing a brake landing now. Okay, so what a brake landing is, is that we stay at 2,000 feet. You can have the autopilot on for this if you wish. Um, if you know the runway heading and all that sort of stuff and you're set up for it, you can have that. So uh, for the purpose of this, I'm gonna stick above 300, uh, 300 knots. And we'll, we'll just uh, slowly bring it down so we can uh, work out getting down to 2,000 feet when we get back to the brake. Now what the brake is, is you fly over the runway at 2,000 feet um, and 
the tower will call break, or the commander of the uh, squadron will call break, and what happens is all the jets that are in the formation will fall in behind instead of staying in formation. So that's what we call a break landing. So the lead aircraft will pull off to the left, and then about three or four seconds later, uh, the next aircraft will pull off. Sometimes, they'll, if they're really good, they'll pull off pretty much straight away and um, do a smaller, so like uh, the lead aircraft will do a larger bank, like a steeper bank, and the smaller aircraft, well, the, the, not the smaller, but the, the leading aircraft will do a big bank, and then the uh, following aircraft, uh, after that, every um, part of the squadron will do a lesser of a bank, and then come around a bit further out, and then line up in behind the leader. So basically, the leader will land first, and then the um, and then after, one after the other, the others will land. So they're coming around now. So basically you'd have Joe Blobs that side and maybe someone on the other side. Um, probably most likely on that side uh, if they are if they're in formation and you would be here. They could be on any side really, it doesn't really matter. Um, they most likely would be on the right side and the person at the back here would be um, a little bit further back. So when I start breaking and I don't run into them, so, formation flying is pretty pretty nifty. So we're going to go out just a little bit further. What we can do here is we can go 2,000, hit that. Aircraft is going to try the radar, the minimum radar altitude. Uh, so will it do what I want it to do and go into our altitude by speed up? No, it's not going. I'm going to have to have a look into that a little bit more. That's all right. All right, so we're going to drop the autopilot. Alright, so we're going to come around and start lining up for the brake landing now. So all we're going to do is we're going to slowly drop uh, down 5%, so 5 degrees, pitch down, and just mosey on down to the runway at 2000. Once we get to 2000, we're going to just sit at the uh, 250 mark. Now, some aircraft, you're going to be doing this whole maneuver with uh, spoilers. Okay, so you'll have your spoilers out and all of that sort of stuff. The spoilers don't come into play until you're aligned up with the runway. Uh, this aircraft, like I said, once it gets down to a certain speed, uh, the spoilers will eject, uh, will close up and you'll be able to lower your brakes. Okay. So we're at 2000. Uh, for practice, if you really wanted to, um, you can do it at 2500 or 3000 or whatever is comfortable for you. Um, have a look at what uh, the standard operating procedures are for brake landing on your airfield of choice. Uh, some airfields don't have it, most military airfields will. Alright, so we're going to line up the speed breakers now on. We're at 2,000 feet or close to it. You can be 100 or so off. Now you want to be right over the center line. Alright, flaps down half. Speed up. So basically, this is so we can. Uh, Lower the landing gear, they can see us in formation. It looks cool. Alright, so gear down now. Now, you would have gear down and, uh, and your uh, speed brake down at the same time. So we're directly over the uh, runway, or somewhat over the runway. So if you're in the tower view, you'd see something like that. That's cool. Alright. Put the speed brake on and slow back down again. And then we break away. So the tower should see something like that. All right. Obviously, the we don't have a wingman, so it doesn't look as cool. But yeah, 
That's all good. So you want to try and keep the speed up over 200. You want to keep up around about just above, somewhat near to the 2000 mark until you come around. If you have a VR headset, you'll be focused in on that runway the whole entire time by just glancing back and forth to your speed. Um, I try and do my best without it. I can't wait to have one. All right, once we're lined up now, for me, I know where to line up. So you do this a couple of times, you'll find like uh, little things like that, little landmarks that you know where to line up with. All right. All right, so now we can just go full into a uh, full flat mode and just try and keep our speed at the thing uh, in the E bracket while we're keeping an altitude right there. So if you can hold that spot, you can hold this spot right here while you've got the pitch up. Okay. You're doing well. Uh, so you just need a little bit more speed. So you want to be sticking about 140, 150. All right, so we're picking up some speed. You want to pitch back down. You want to try and keep that as best you can. All right, so once we're at 45, go. Cool. So that's a bit hard. That's why I, I want to have the, uh, all right, so I'm gonna pitch back down again. That's why I want to get uh, VR to make this a little bit more exciting. So I can actually look back at the runway and like, yep, that's where I gotta go. All right, so we're kind of at a 45 degree angle now. So what we can do now is start pitching into the airfield. Um, now this is a really steep pitch. So we want to get that speed up. Want to get that speed up. So even if you try and use speed brake at this point in time, not going to work. It doesn't work over under 230. Uh, on this jet. Uh, other jets may be different, so don't take this jet as uh, the be all and end all because it's the most advanced. Other jets may be different. Alright, so by now you should be at about 1500 or 1000 somewhat and it's starting to come in. So you should have that yellow ball on, on par with everything that you're doing. Every time I do this, I get better at the uh, keeping the ball in uh, check as well. So, so that's your brake landing coming in nice and easily, keeping that yellow ball in check. Obviously, speeding up to keep that. There we go. Power. Just telling you power. All right, keeping that yellow ball, minusing the power out, minusing power output, putting power back up. And it's just a tad to keep that ball from sinking too fast. And then rotating up, cool, nice landing. All right, so now we gotta hit that again quickly, get that and get flaps up and off we go. So this trim, for some reason, just does not want to work. Uh, but it doesn't really matter. You're doing a, another takeoff, pretty much, and you've got speed when you're coming into land. So landing gear up, and we'll go that way. All right, so we're going to turn to the right now. All right, so we'll do a right end turn. And now we're going to do a controlled crash. All right, so you might have seen a cable on the runway. Now, the cable on this air um, airfield doesn't work okay? oh, on this default air, airfield. So what we're going to do is simulate uh, a carrier landing on the ground. So you can do uh, all sorts of different uh, practices and stuff like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to come out and go around. How much fuel do I have? I've got plenty. Uh, so we're going to do two more landings. One is an ILS and one is a carrier crash, controlled crash on land. Now we're going to follow the same 
rules uh, as a carrier, but to save any problems uh, from crashing into the ground, we're going to be doing an extra 200 feet above the level. So now on the carrier side, so pretend the air, airfield is the carrier, we're going to be flying on the right hand side of runway 32. So we're not going to fly over the top this time. We're going to be flying at a thousand feet, turning around the runway at the other end, uh, coming around to the downwind leg and we will be doing 800 feet uh, and then coming around and landing and lining up for a 600 feet landing. Uh, so basically it's 800, 600, 400 consecutively out on the water, but out here uh, we're going to add the 200 feet extra um, to our altitude uh, to practice all of that um, landing at a safe altitude height. Uh, um, that is just so we don't crash into the ground and we don't scare the neighbours. Alright. So we're going to slowly pull back. We're going to put our speed brake on. So this is also to let the carriers know this is a standard operating procedure of landing in a, in a carrier unless otherwise granted a um, full stop emergency landing and you just come straight in. Alright, so we will be doing a carrier landing uh, tutorial at a later date. I need to practice a bit more before I do that. Um, Alright, so speed brake off. So what we'll do is we're going to drop it down to a thousand and hold at a thousand. So that runway we're going to pretend is a carrier. So this is a controlled crash landing from here. All right. So we got our speed brake on just to keep us down at the 150 mark while we're descending kind of rapidly. We'll make sure that our um, altitude is in the correct spot. So we're coming up to our thousand feet. So we don't want to go over the buildings. So we're going to come to the left of those buildings, but we're going to stay to the right of the runway. So keep coming down. You don't have to be right on a thousand uh, for this if you don't want to get too close to the ground. But try and get when you're doing your carrier landings, try and stay at the 800 mark. So we're right on a thousand now. So we're going to fly over. Okay. Um, normally you would uh, do it so you the tower. Uh, is in the inside, but whatever, it's okay, we'll fly it. pretending that the tower is a little bit over to the left of the runway there. We're gonna fly over and they're gonna see us, blah blah blah. Yep, yeah, cool. Um, speed brake is still up, that's okay. Speed brake is up due to the fact that we don't have flaps down or gear down, but they will, they will disappear over time. So we're under a thousand. So we're gonna start turning now, staying at our thousand feet. And we're going to start lowering flaps. So the flaps are now lowered so the speed brake can come up. Alright, now we're going to lower it down to 800 feet. Which is probably really, really low. We're already at a thousand and that's low enough. So it's crazy. Alright. Now I'm, I'm, I know I'm lined up ish. So let's start lowering down to a thousand now. About uh, down to 800. So here you can have your gear down and your hooks down. 
time. Start lowering down to 800. Full flaps. Now at this altitude, you want to be very careful, alright? So, especially when you're coming in the ground, ops, okay? You want to keep that speed up for as long as you possibly can, alright? So we're right under our 800 feet altitude. Technically there's water down there, alright? Okay, so you got to remember that. So what we'll do is we'll stick around here, we'll go around and start turning for the runway. So the 800 feet above sea level is where you would be when you're doing your carrier landing. Uh, we could probably do hey, the rest of this at 800 feet. I reckon it should have been 1,200, 1,800. Uh, so keep the speed up, keep it at 800. Start turn. Now you got to remember that this is a straight runway. The uh, the runway for the um, carrier is going to be on an angle. So that's actually a decent turn. What I just did then, uh, I would have been lined up perfectly for the runway. But for this particular one, we're just going to come back in. And it's good. All right. So now we just hold our 600, which we did say. You can see that line crossing the runway there. All right. So now I'm going to pull up. Control crash. I landed, cables hooked, and we're good to go. Alright, band stream come kicked in that time. That's good. Alright, so that's basically the control crash. Technically you would have stopped because we hit the hook, alright? If you get it perfect every time. So we'll do a, um, I'm pretty sure there's an airfield that I can download or I think there's a default one that we can actually use the, uh, the traps on the airfield so I can show you how the traps work on airfields but there's also the um, aircraft carrier that we can start learning in as well. So what we'll do is we'll just head out this way while I set up the ILS. Um, so what uh, direction are we going? 310. Let's go 310 and we'll hold altitude there. Alright, so what we're going to do is disconnect uh, Active Sky next. Now, Active Sky next has been disconnected, so we're waiting for the process to uh, be completed, and once that is done, the um, sky should change. Just get rid of that message. No, it's not. Alright, so I'm just going to quickly change this weather. It hasn't disappeared like I thought it would. It normally does, but that's alright. So clear skies all around. Alright, so we have now clear skies. Okay. I already have an ILS set up uh, for the runway, so all I have to do is turn it on. So this particular one is that. You can also turn the tack hand on as well uh, to X for me, and that will do both the runways. Okay, turn that off. All I do is we'll come back around, sticking it around our 3,000 feet mark. Let's find the airport. It's probably behind us somewhere. going to try and have timestamps for this if you've watched all of it so far, if you want to find a particular one. Alright, 
so we're coming in for landing okay we've given a full stop landing and we've done our full circuit like we've already had or one of our brake landing tests so we're going to go landing gear there you go flaps now the ILS should pop up for runway 14 ILS is turned on so we should hear it So that alarm is letting you know that your gear's down and you're going way too fast. Um, Alright, so there are the beacons. Alrighty, so let's uh, just give that a pause for a second. I am just going to check one quick thing um, to make sure I've got what I need. Alright, so... Uh, Ten, uh, ten seventy. Make sure I have it. ILS ID ten seventy. I think I've got set. Okay, so yeah, I've got it set up for ten seventy, which is good. Um, so basically, if it doesn't pop up, there's just a line. Um, it does pop up uh, definitely for um, uh, the runways. So you have a line up and down, left and right, like that. Okay. Tack can you can actually have turned off if you wish. So let's see if we can just receive uh, what's going on. So all of those uh, beacons are telling me that I have locked on to the ILS. I can't remember if this is going to pop up straight away or not. It does somewhat pop up soon. If it doesn't, then I'll have to do an ILS at a different airport. Um, so basically, you just have a center line to follow. Yeah, it's not coming up on this uh, airfield. I might have to do it at a different airfield. So I'll do an ILS at a different airfield. Um, show you that so thanks for watching guys that was a long landing that one very very long landing well that's crazy am i gonna make it just technically that's part of the runway it's just not extended that far out crazy. Alright, so yeah, the ILS didn't work on this uh, airfield, which is kind of annoying. Um, so, we can uh, do another ILS at a later date uh, before we go out and do our um, carrier landings. So, thanks guys for now. Um, yeah, you've been awesome. Hope this helped for advanced landing tutorial. And I hope you can master it. Um, I'm still mastering it, as you can see, but it's self-explanatory. Thanks, guys.